Welcome to uh, Rugby Borough Council's Planning Committee meeting this uh, Wednesday, the 22nd of June. I am Councillor Tony Gillius, the Chairman of this committee. The meeting is being web streamed to the public through the Council's YouTube channel. During the meeting, if you wish to speak, please use the push to talk button on the microphone in front of you. This will allow the camera to pan in your general direction. Before we begin the formal agenda, I'm obliged to read out the following fire notice. There is no fire drill scheduled in the build building this evening. If the fire alarm sounds, then please could I ask you to make your way out of the building, down the main staircase and out of the main doors of the town hall and congregate at the entrance to Caldicott Park. An officer of the council will give instructions on when it is safe to return to the building. Moving on to the agenda, the first item of business is to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 25th of May. Can I have a proposal for that, please? Right. Yep. And a seconder? Yep. Okay. All those in favour, please show. Well, that's approved. Um, do we have any apologies? <coughs> Excuse me. One apology for tonight's meeting from Council Lawrence. Council Mrs. Tim is substituting. Thank you. Declarations of interest. To receive declarations of interest as defined by the Council's Code of Conduct for members. Any non pecuniary interests? Councillor Council Willis. Uh, item one, Chair. I am an employee officer at Warwickshire County Council, albeit not within the Highways Authority. Okay. Did, did anybody else his hand? Just a general one, as a Warwickshire County Councillor. Uh, and I'd just like to, as a non-pecuniary myself, as item number two on the agenda, uh, New Haven, near Witherbrook, as a ward councillor. That's Councillor Mrs Brown, Warwickshire County Council. <laughs> councillor for Shilton and Woolby, um, item number four. Okay, um, any pecuniary interests? None at all, okay, excellent. And then section, um, notice from section 106, Local Government Finance Act 1992, non-payment of community charge or, or council tax. And we're all legal, excellent. Uh, we now move on to um, item number five, uh, item number four, sorry, which is applications for consideration. There have been a, a couple of changes to the order uh, and that is item number three, which is 32 High Street, is going to be deferred to the next meeting in July. And item number five, because we've got public speakers, is now moving to the first item. So can we move over to Lucy for the presentation of the first item? Thank you, Chair. Um, the first application which I'm bringing to you this evening is application R22 forward slash 0226. Um, this relates to the site, the caravan at Rosefield at Hinkley Road in Woolvey. Um, hopefully on the screens or in front of you, you'll soon be able to see um, the red line boundary of the application site. Um, I can follow with the pointer. Um, so this is the access point from Hinkley Road and it is around this boundary um, that the application relates to specifically. Uh, the development proposal is the change of use of land for the siting of one residential Gypsy and Traveller pitch. Um, there has been the use by Gypsy and Traveller pitch since 2014 at the site. Um, this was specific to previous applicants. Um, the application tonight is brought forward by the same applicant who had a three-year temporary approval from an application in 2018. Um, the application was brought to the local planning authority um, for a permanent consent. Um, this is the Google Earth view of the site. Um, again, you can see the access um, and the caravan in situ. Um, again, this is the uh, caravan which can be seen from the Hinkley Road with the adjoining properties on either side. Um, again, the block plan, there is timber gates as you enter the site um, with the mobile home in place. 
In terms of the key considerations of this application, um, it is located within the Greenbelt um, and doesn't meet the exceptions in Greenbelt policy and is therefore considered inappropriate unless there is very special circumstances. Um, within the application, we have been presented with very special circumstances by the agent, um, which include the unmet need in the borough, the accommodation assessment preference for smaller sites, the compliance with policy, um, minor harm to the Greenbelt, policy SDC1 being complied with, the site's proximity to Woolvie, and the call for sites resulting in no suitable sites. In terms of the character and appearance, it is considered that the siding of the mobile home and the location reflects that of a small bungalow and would not be out of character with the street scene and therefore complying with policy SDC1. In terms of the site supply and suitability, as is outlined in section three of the report, this outlines the need of Rugby Borough Council and our shortfall in supply. And the application would help to contribute to this identified need. Um, also outlined in, under section four is the uh, site's compliance to the criteria of policy DS2 of the Rugby Borough Council local plan. Um, as previously outlined, it is considered that there is no suitable available or alternative sites within Rugby Borough. Um, and it is also addressed that there is limited personal circumstances with the application. In terms of technical consultees, both Warwickshire Hi County Council Highways, R Rugby's Environmental Health and Ecology all have no objection to the proposal. Um, in terms of the planning balance and the case of very special circumstances, um, the uh, inappropriateness of the development within the Greenbelt does weigh against the development, but it is clear within the application documents that the application would be specific to the applicant, Mr Taylor. The latest figures that we have at Rugby Borough Council are from 2017, but this does include the preference for smaller sites, which is the case with this proposal. And um, we have the compliance with the principles set out with policy DS2, and it is considered that there would be limited harm to the openness of the Greenbelt and the purposes of including it within it from the application. The site is considered to comply with policy DSC, SDC1 of the Rugby Local Plan. Additionally, in terms of the case for very circumstances, um, we have the latest position showing that we have our undersupply of 24.6 pitches, and these are required before the end of 2022 to 23 in order, I, in order to ident meet the need identified. And um, it would also bring to the councillor's attention that there was no um, need provided or approved through any applications between 2021 to 2022. However, this isn't enough solely to reach special circumstances. As well, as though it is situated within the Greenbelt, there is the proximity to Woolvie and the access via the footpath from the site to Woolvie. And again, the point of no suitable sites within the borough. Um, whilst the weighting of these matters is a matter of planning judgment, on balance it is considered in this case that whilst there may be the lack of personal circumstances, given the need and lack of suitable and available alternative sites within the borough, a temporary planning permission is proposed to the councils, councillors tonight um, and is considered appropriate for the reasons set out both in the presentation and the report. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks for that, Lucy. Uh, just to run over um, uh, some rules and regulations before we uh, allow the speakers to speak. Uh, representatives and objectors, um, the applicants of the uh, and then the ward council will each be invited to speak. Um, each speaker, um, committee members will be asked if they have any points of clarification after they've spoken. Uh, any ward council, and we haven't got any tonight. Um, members of the committee will then go into debate after that. And the rules for public speaking for those who are speaking. Speakers will have three minutes to make their presentation. They will be warned by a short alarm when that they have 30 seconds left and then a further alarm sound when that time has expired. Their presentation will then have to be brought to a halt. No extra time will be allowed. All speakers should direct their presentations amplifying the planning matters they have previously put to us for the benefit of the planning committee. Speakers should restrict their comments to material planning considerations. 
any non-planning issue should be disregarded. Speakers should not introduce any additional information that has not previously brought, been brought to the planning authority's attention, i.e. late items that have not been suitably considered by officers and properly addressed in the officer's report to planning committee for members' deliberation. No visual aids or handouts may be used and no questions to officers or members will be allowed. No members of the public are allowed to take part in the debate once the presentation has been given. So we're all clear on that. Thank you. Um, we have um, the first speaker, which is um, Councillor Adrian Warwick, who is the Parish Council Chairman of Woolvey. You have th three minutes. Thank you, Chair. All too often over the last few years, I've been involved in issues around gypsy and traveller sites, and I've heard impassioned pleas about personal circumstances. But could I reflect on need that Rugby Borough Council has placed injunctions on its own land, has made zero uh, provision on Coton Holton and the new southern extension, and happily throws travellers off its parks? Do these people not have need? No, it's ignored in the urban areas. The report before you tonight states the requirement to find 61 pitches by 2032, and a provision has been made for 24. However, it mentions nothing of the unauthorised encampments nor the many outstanding applications on gypsy and traveller sites, particularly in Shilton and Barnacle, that this planning authority has failed to determine, some dating back to 2015. I would conjecture if facts were available that the 61 figure has been greatly exceeded. The reason we don't have the facts is again because this authority has failed a direct instruction of the planning inspector in 2019 to produce a supplementary planning document needed to make your plan sound. And Eaton and Bedworth did theirs in 10 months. No one seems to give a 2017 base figure, nor anyone will confirm how the unauthorised sites contribute to it. You simply allow this to multiply in the northern parishes uncontrolled. Your report tonight fails to make more than a passing reference to the 2015 planning policy for traveller sites. It's not even cited in the relevant policy. This document clearly states that the Greenbelt is not subject to the same rules for the lack of five-year housing demand, and it clearly states that a lack of a five-year supply for travel accommodation and the personal needs of the travelling community are exceptionally unlikely to outweigh the very special circumstances. Mark Pawsey MP obtained a letter from Robert Pincher, Minister of State, who confirmed that this is the case. I have it with me. This site, coupled to adjacent developments, one with an ignored stop notice, is significantly impacting on the openness and character of our Greenbelt, totally contrary to the MPPF. This site has a string of consents dating back to 2009, not 2015, 2009. The original personal permission, to our knowledge, was never the occupant. To say after 13 years this is temporary is laughable. However, Wolvie will, on compassionate grounds, accept a 12-month extension. Then we would like this site and any other unauthorised developments nearby returned back to Greenbelt, please, and would request reinstatement conditions be added to this report to that effect. Please follow policy as written in the Planning and Traveller document from 2015. Th this states that this is contrary to Policy E, Section 16 of this document. This should not take place. Thank you. I am finished. Just to clarify one point from the chair, I don't know if anybody else, any other members have got any points of clarification they wish to make, but uh, you've mentioned the traveller, traveller sites uh, of 2015 policy E16. For, for members' benefit, could, do you know what that policy states? I have Yes, I, I can, Chair, if you're asking me. The Department of Communities and Local Government clarified Gypsy and Traveller policy in 2015, in August 2015, and produced a document for the very reasons that the issues surrounding this application raise. And in there, in fact, your report tonight glosses over it very nicely by just referring to it in the very last paragraph by saying uh, that this is contrary to policy E of the PPTS, but it is not listed in the relevant policies, and to my mind, it should be. Councillor Adam Daly. Hiya, thanks. Just a quick um, point of clarification on the on your on your sentence about the twelve month extension. What was the rationale behind the um, the suggestion of a twelve month extension? To be blunt, Councillor Daly, on compassionate grounds only, not planning, which is a reckless thing for us to be saying. But we we recognise that we wouldn't be throwing people off tomorrow. If they were on a park in the town, perhaps they might be, but not in Woolvey. We would like to be compassionate in the village.
Any other further points from councillors? Clarification? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, sorry about that, I don't know what's wrong with it. Um, 2015, that was the last um, time that this document was revised or has there been a more recent revision based on um, sort of latest best practice? Yes, through you, Chair, that, that's correct. The latest um, Gypsy Travel Assessment <coughs> document was produced in 2017, which obviously was uh, enforced, um, informed our uh, local plan. There is a new one currently uh, being prepared as we speak. Um, members may be familiar with the Cabinet report that's going next week. Um, in that document, there is the uh, request that members will approve the local development scheme. As part of that document, there is then the request that we will um, uh, move forward with the Gypsy and Traveller Sites DPD and attached to that is a timeline and, and that includes us currently doing the Gypsy, uh, the new updating new GTAA because obviously as we appreciate it is now five years out of date. Thanks, that's helpful. Councillor Heather Timms. Yeah, I think mine is probably addressed more to the officers. One of my, my concerns are about the numbers in this report. They seem to refer to sites that are near to this particular one rather than uh, looking at the borough as a whole uh, because obviously that's where it, you know, we should be looking at those numbers. I'm concerned it hasn't been a call for sites since 2017. That seems to be five years ago in my reckoning. I'm concerned that we haven't uh, developed an SBD. I, I hear the DPD words, but why wasn't the SBD done? Yes, yeah, I mean, again, through, through you, Chair, um, I understand our yeah, development strategy team have been working on various documents, um, but I believe this DPD will then and will inform then any sort of SBD that document that's then going forward. But yeah, unfortunately, yeah, there have been delays by, by that team. I'm sorry, could you answer them that the, the question about the numbers and also uh, on that score, how many other temporary and unauthorised sites are contributing to our numbers or are you only talking in that 61 about uh, ones that have been permitted? Because you, the numbers go back and forth in the report and you talk about double counting and temporary ones and all sorts of things. So I'm not clear that the numbers that you put in this report are actually accurate. And if you haven't made a call for site since 2017, why haven't you? I mean, with regard to the call for sites, I know one was going to be done earlier, but because of the global pandemic, that got delayed, and that's why it's only just being done now. Otherwise, we, I think the idea was it would have been done um, one or two years ago. Um, but I do know that's another reason why there's been a delay in actually getting um, consultants in to do that, to actually then go through the work and actually then get to sites as well, because uh, there's obviously been difficulty with that. But that's why it's, it's being pressed to go. Um, I know they've been instructed already, the agents working on the new GTTA, and that will then feed into the call for sites, because that's one of the early parts of the um, local development framework, and it's actually quoted as a timeline in the Cabinet report that actually explains when that's going to be done. And I believe, actually, I'll just have a look because I've got a copy here. Um, yeah, the call for sites is, is scheduled to be September, October of this year uh, for, the, for the next one to be done. So it is actually all, there's a yeah, very clear timeline now about how that's going to be done. Um, on numbers, I don't know if um, Lucy can explain a bit more on her report where some of those have come from. Thank you. Um, the 61 um, covers the entire borough, not just. Um, the specific area, the figures um, there are for the, the whole of rugby. It's not, they're not broken down um, into specific areas. In the report, you talk about double counting and you talk about 41 and you talk about different numbers. There's a 35 in there to 2022. How do you think um, myself, as a member of this committee, can feel confident? that the numbers you're presenting are right and how many temporary and unauthorised 
things are not included, are, are in there or not in there. I, I don't understand your counting mechanism. Through you, Chair. Um, all of the figures that I have um, were provided to me by our development strategy colleagues um, who are in charge of the counting process that we carry out. Um, in terms of the double counting, it was to provide um, information and background to applications that were around that time of when the counting was taking place so that then it could be clear as to whether they fell into the need provision before 2017 and then that which is then included um, in the local plan. The 35 relates back to the breakdown of the pitch provision um, that's included in 3.3 of the report. So it obviously outlines that in the time frame of 2017 to 2022, um, they would hope that there would be 35 pitches provided, um, and then this falls to 12 between 22 to 27, and then 14 um, from 27 to 2032, which is the time expanded through the local plan of 2011 to 2031, um, reaching the total of 61. Clearly, we've got an issue with the numbers being caught I, out of date. I'd like to come back about the unauthorised and temporary. Where are they? Where do they sit? I'm sorry, I think I've asked that question four times now. Sorry, yes, through you, Chair. I mean, with regard to temporary, then they will be part of the figures and the need calculations our development strategy do, team do. Obviously, an unauthorised sites then won't be counted because obviously they are unauthorised, so they're not permanent. So. Um, you know, for example, if an unauthorised site was made permanent, then potentially that could count towards our need. Councillor Sanderson. Chair, I, I don't know why we're harking back to reports in 2015 when we adopted a new local plan in 2019. Presumably that is the superior document that we now work to. I mean, yeah, just for you, Chair, just for a point of clarification now. Obviously, you're correct, the local plan was adopted in 2019, but obviously that local, that local plan is based a lot on evidence that that's makes up that local plan. So, so in terms of the uh, gypsy and traveller need, it was obviously from a document in 2017, because as you may recall, it obviously when the local plan got adopted, there was obviously a, a local plan inspection inquiry, and that then went away, and then obviously it was a while before the inspector produced his report, and then before we actually then presented it at council to be adopted. So to some extent, um, you know, by the time that document gets adopted, but there is am a delay. I, am I correct? There was a call for sites at that time, and no sites came forward? Yes, I believe you may be correct on that. Yeah. No I believe no suitable sites came forward. Okay, and we'll have to remember, of course, when the inspector did look at uh, our local plan, he did, he did impress at that time in 2019, this, this, the, the local plan did have to have a demo, development plan document for gypsy and travellers. And so, so we are looking back at figures from 2017. Uh, let's move on to um, the uh, planning agent, and that is uh, Mr George Smith from Marron's Planning. Mr. Smith, you have three minutes. Okay. Um, yes, th thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak to you this evening. Um, we obviously support the application and uh, welcome the officer's recommendation for approval. Um, I think, as has been mentioned, the site has a, a history of um, temporary permissions for gypsies and travellers, and the current um, occupier, Mr. Taylor, has been uh, there for a period of, of well, since 2018. Uh, during that time, he has sort of complied with all of the relevant planning conditions imposed on the permission under which he's occupied, and a further consent is now sought um, due to his personal circumstances, in including, including health, um, which mean that he is currently unable to move on. Um, also playing into that, of course, is the lack of, lack of supply or alternative sites that have uh, been mentioned in, in the report. Um, the personal circumstances of the applicant have been complicated and, and made somewhat worse by the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and Mr. Taylor does need accommodation to access or to continue to access healthcare. Um, and he obviously enjoys the support of the applicant at the current location um, and, and neighbours. Um, we welcome the officer's recommendation for approval. 
um, and assessment that the very special circumstances test has been met. Um, just of particular relevance, I think, uh, been touched on. There is a need for gypsy and traveller pitches in the borough, but a very, very limited supply. Uh, the council does rely on windfall applications to meet the identified need for gypsy and traveller pitches. Uh, and I think the planning officer report um, sets out that no such planning permissions have been granted since April 2021. Uh, and as has been mentioned, the gypsy and travellers SPD, uh, although due to um, begin preparation uh, shortly, is going to be some way off actually identifying suitable sites and those becoming available. Um, so uh, our, our position is that uh, the, the application accords with the relevant policies um, that there's no suitable, available and affordable alternative sites available at the moment and that the applicants, uh, sorry, that Mr Taylor's uh, personal circumstances in combination with that meet the very special circumstances test. Uh, and we'd, uh, I suppose, invite members to uh, support the officer recommendation and, and grant plan permission here this evening. Thank you. Do you have any questions from, from members to the Mr. Smith? Councillor Mrs. Brown. Thank you for your presentation. Um, could you clarify, I think you mentioned neighbours had responded to the proposals. Can you just clarify me, for me what, what they said, how they feel about it? I think you said it was supported by neighbours as far as you know, is that right? Uh, yes, yeah, so as, as part of the application, um, the, uh, Mr. Taylor has submitted a statutory declaration um, which uh, sort of speaks to obviously support from uh, the applicant who owns the site. And within that document, he does reference the fact that there is neighbour support. I'm, I'm not certain what form that takes. It wasn't, okay. I don't think, a, a, a consultation response to the application. Um, but it was more sort of a, a welfare point and, and support, I think, to him. Um, in his current circumstances. Thank you. Uh, a question from myself. Uh, if, for instance, you do get um, three-year temporary permission to continue on the site, could you assure the members that after that three-year temporary permission, you will remove all the, the caravan, etc., from the site? I, th uh, I think we would obviously comply with the planning conditions that are imposed. Um, I'd say it would be open to the applicant to apply through the process for an extension if circumstances uh, justify, justify that in terms of the availability of, of alternative sites. So I wouldn't want to close that off as an option, um, but certainly the intention would be to comply with any planning permission that's granted. Right, then we'll move into debate. Uh, who would like to start. Councillor, Councillor Tint, Willis. Sorry Chair, it was a, uh, another question to Mr. Mr. Smith. Um, was that response you gave to the Chair a no? I don't, I, well, I, I think it was a, we need to wait and see. I don't think it's, it's a no. Um, it's just, you know, circumstances uh, been delayed with the SPD so far. Um, availability sites locally. Um, if the occupier has to move from the current location, he needs somewhere to go, uh, preferably local to it. So it, it's just very much, I can't discount that at the moment. Thank you. Chair, we can only deal with the application in front of us. No one's got a crystal ball. Let's open up the debate. Uh, Who would like to speak first? Councillor Eccleston, please, far away. Thank you. Um, we've, we've mentioned the requirement for um, land allocation for gypsy and traveller sites and um, clearly empathise with that view. But nearly every application that comes before this council is for either temporary or uh, retrospective um, planning permission when it comes to, and, and this is no exception, it's uh, again for temporary uh, accommodation for a, a three year period. Um, I sympathise with the view of the um, parish council at Woolby, actually, and, um, and, and, I, and I think 
for them to offer a 12-month uh, grace period, if you like, to revisit this whole application, I think, is a, is a sound, is a sound um, proposal. Um, I don't know whether I can, I can actually, I can. <laughs> I'd like to, to propose uh, that amendment to, um, to this application, Chair. Yeah. Okay, have we got anybody that would like to second that? I'd like to understand the legality of that, first of all, because I think we have to have, we've got an application in front of us that is for three years uh, as a temporary one, so I'd like to understand whether it's actually legal to amend it to one. And the other thing I would like to say is that the officer in the planning balance uh, paragraph has actually quoted, even though she's talking about the need for pitches within uh, Rugby Borough, it does actually say, however, unmet need alone is not likely to be enough to constitute very special circumstances. So I'd just like to make, that's not part of the debate, I'd just like to make that statement again. Thank you. Through you, Chair, um, in relation to your first question about the uh, time period, so the application um, is for the change of use of land for the siting of one residential gypsy and traveller pitch. It doesn't refer to a time period. The time period is a condition in the report. It is listed as condition three, which sets out the time period is three years. So it is open to members to amend that condition to a different time period if they wish. So my understanding from Councillor Eccleston is that he's proposing uh, recommendation but with an amendment to condition three to 12 months. Is that correct, Councillor Eccleston? Thank you. Councillor Willis. Thank you, Chair. In, in light of the helpful feedback from our legal team, I'm more than happy to second Councillor Eccleston's proposal. Okay, have we got any further speakers on that? Okay, shall we, shall we move? Uh, yeah, Councillor just, Slinger. Just one question um, for the officers uh, about why a three year period was granted. Are there any particular welfare points that have been taken into account regarding the applicant's uh, well-being? Uh? I mean, again, through you, Chair, um, I think a three-year temporary permission was possibly proposed by officers as a condition, because obviously, as, as mentioned, it was for a permanent. Was that was partly to, th I'm not aware there's any particular um, very special circumstance in terms of health need. It was more that to give the time scale that um, a for our own um, DPT to progress we then also have the results of the GTAA about our actual need and also then give time for the applicant to find potentially alternative sites if um, you know depending on what the need came forward so I think that's why we gave a three-year time frame but as point, pointed out obviously by my legal colleague that's up to members to change that time frame because it was a condition requested by um, officers not by um, the uh, applicant Councillor Savasaba, did you want to speak? Obviously, in your report, officer, you comment the application applicant has been unable to find alternative accommodation. Has he worked with you? Has he this is a, he's tried to find alternative accommodation, but he can't find it. And there is a shortage of this kind of accommodation in Rugby Borough Council. So he has tried, obviously, and he can't find, he's applying for a temporary accommodation. Mike, so when he says he tried, have you, have you got any communication with him what he tried? Um, it's just through the uh, information provided with the application that they outline um, that they haven't been able to find um, anything further or haven't been provided with specific um, details of sites, um, but that would be backed up by the information through um, the obviously lack of pitches that have been authorised um, within the borough and um, no suitable sites coming forward through the call for sites. Um, but I don't have specific details of others that may have been um, considered not acceptable um, by the applicant. Um, but they have also provided that just due to the impacts of the um, pandemic and their health that has limited um, what, where they could go or what they're looking for. Okay, now we've got a proposal on the table for to change condition three from a three-year to a one-year temporary stay. Um, we've got no further speakers. We've got a proposal in a second, and we'll put that to the vote. All in favour of that, please show. Uh, 
that's five, though, all those against. That's six. Okay. Um, Right, so we need to, uh, some reasons for refusal, if that's the way you, where you're going. Uh, through you, it was a, uh, the motion was a recommendation for approval based on a 12-month um, a 12 month condition um, that has failed so now we need an alternative motion to vote on it's either the original motion if someone's going to propose and second it or if there's a, a move for refusal we need a motion for refusal proposed and seconded with appropriate reasons can I um, ask that we vote against this on the basis that very special circumstances are not being met here at all. There is no unmet need. It actually says that in the pal planning balance comment. It's there. The reason for refusal would be that the very special circumstances have not been met for development in the green belt on the basis that unmet need alone is not likely to be enough to constitute chair, very chair, special circumstances. Can we move the vote, please, with no further speeches? Well, we're not going to move to the I'm vote. I'm actually quoting We won't be moving reasons, to the vote which because... Which I think I was allowed to do. Because we need to de debate further whether or not we are th talking about a three-month temporary, temporary three. stay of it. Three years. Three years. Year. Year. Mm -hmm. So... So, proposed, I think, since the finger was going to... Right, so, right. You, have, you have proposed that we have the three-year. Second that. I second that. Councillor Slinger. So, have we got any further... Proposals, please. It, sorry, it, it isn't a proposal, and do forgive me. I, you know, I'm not intent on keeping people in longer than they need to be. But can I can I ask about the point of process here? We are going to continue to have these discussions about this kind of development because we are struggling for sites. I know what you said about sufficiency isn't you know the the um, be all and end all here. We struggle because we haven't got sufficiency of site, but we do have an obligation to meet a particular need, and unless that is faced, we will continue to have this kind of um, a anomaly almost, because what best practice says now for Gypsy Roma Traveller sites is family sites, small sites, exactly like that one, and it's quite hard to argue against good practice. Chair, I don't know where we record that or if it's relevant even, but okay. it's Councillor Tins. Chair, could I say, I have actually read the report, and at 6.5, it does actually say no particular need for this applicant. No personal circumstances exist that are actually outweighed the very special circumstances that apply to building in the Greenbelt. It actually says that in the report. So it is not about the personal circumstances of this applicant. Do we have a proposal for, for, refu well, for I refusal? I thought I'd given one. Yes, yes, we I had yes. a proposal for refusal. Okay. okay. Vote on the table, for, proposal on the table first for a three month, three th year. a three year temporary as per approval as per, as per written in the condition. All those in favour of that, please show. Seven against. Four in favour, seven against. So we've got a pr proposal for refusal from Councillor Timms, and we've got a seconder. We've got a seconder, Councillor Becky Maudius. I second that, Chair. Can we put that to the vote then? All those in favour of refusal, please vote. Six, seven. 
That's seven. And those against? That's four. So that's refused. Um, through you, Chair, could we just confirm the reasons for refusal, please? So, so uh, Councillor Timms, if I can just clarify what I wrote down from your earlier motion, it was that the very special circumstances aren't made out as there is not an unmet need or any personal circumstances of the applicant, therefore it's inappropriate development in the green belt. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the speakers. Thanks for coming along. And, uh, we move on uh, to the next item on the agenda. That was a bit of a difficult one, that was, wasn't it? I'm getting your head down there. We've now revert back to item number one on that on the uh, applications for consideration and, and that is rugby gateway and we've got richard holt to present Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, this is an application um, that's been brought to committee because of the level of third-party interest. It is an application for the approval of Condition 21, which is against the original outline application for the Rugby Gateway site. Um, this particular um, Condition 21 is in relation to Phase R3, uh, which is located down here in the site. Um, which was 446 dwellings. And as part of that um, condition or phase, there is a requirement for a construction method statement. The matters that have already been established by the outline approval and the reserve, subsequent reserve matters at, um, for phase R3 are the principle of development and the design and layout of this phase of development. In addition to those approvals, there's also been temporary permission granted for a construction access from the Leicester Road over here along the site to the Spine Road, which links Rugby Gateway R1 and R2. So going back to the screen before, the black line running up to the site here is the Spine Road. Um, R1 and R2 are developed out now virtually, and R3 is the phase here, and then the Spine, the Hall Road was coming in here R4 is the Taylor Wimpy site that is developed. So the scope of the uh, application is that the previous construction management scheme that was approved as part of Condition 21 had the um, construction access coming down the Leicester Road and then into the site here 
and down to the site. The red box up here specifically said that the construction traffic to use the M6 and A426 and the temporary Hall Road as primary access to minimise the impact on surrounding villages. The application that's now before us is, is to revise that construction uh, method statement to have the access actually coming through on a temporary basis through R1 um, and uh, adjacent to R2 up to the site here, rather than using the construction hall road here, which isn't built. Um, again, the red box here was basically to indicate that no right turn shall occur when accessing the site entrance, and all traffic must go up to roundabout, because anyone familiar there knows that this is a dual carriageway. And the blue part here was just reiterating that it was a temporary access for construction traffic to be used um, to R3 until Whitechurch County Council Highways <laughs> consent has been granted off the Leicester Road. Um, this is a site photo. This shows the R3 development here uh, for the next phase. R2 is the site here and R1 is sort of behind. This is the route going up to um, R4, the Taylor Wimpy site, and the, the uh, construction access will be off here to Leicester Road. The key issues really uh, are that with this revised construction method statement is that to propose the use of roads within R1 for construction traffic until that alternative temporary access can be provided. As mentioned, planning permission has already been granted for the temporary access. However, it's actually technical highway consent that's actually awaited by Warwick County Council for the junction works. So the main issues relate to highway safety and the impact on residents. County highways have commented that they have no objection to the application but raise some concerns such as calming features and parked vehicles could make it difficult for large vehicles to pass other vehicles. They don't consider it so detrimental to road safety to warrant refusal of this revised construction method statement and therefore suggest a three-month timeline to allow temporary access to be provided. Residential amenity. Um, objections have been received from local residents and councillors together with a, a petition of over 300 signatures. Environmental services do not object to the proposal, subject to additional measures to prevent noise dust and reduce vehicle speeds. Objections refer also to issues in the past year, um, during the construction phase of R2, which related to speed of vehicles, traffic, dust and parking and hours. Therefore, it is considered that the proposals would have an adverse impact on living conditions of existing residents if this revised construction method statement was brought forward. The planning balance recommendation is that the proposals would adversely impact on living conditions of existing occupiers, which carries weight against the proposals. Although construction traffic within large residential developments is often experienced, there is an approved alternative access in this case. Allowing the use of existing roads on a temporary basis would allow the delivery of the approved residential development slightly earlier, which obviously carries weight in favour of the proposals. However, overall, officers view is that this revised construction method statement should be refused as outlined in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thanks to the office for that. Have we got any questions of the officer? No? Can we? Uh, Councillor Eccleston. Yeah, just, um, just one. When did they actually, um, when did they actually move this change to their, um, their conditions? When did they apply? Um, sorry, Chair, I'd have to look that up exactly when they applied. I do know that. Uh, is it fairly recent? Application. So, like, 13th of May is it's when they actually Thanks. applied. Um, what I understand, a bit of more background to it, is that about 12 months ago uh, they had contacted Warwickshire County Council. Um, to do um, to get to look at doing some of the technical work, then for whatever reason there was um, the applicants um, didn't progress further work for about eight months. But then about four months ago they did then approach Watch County Council to try and move things forward. And obviously that's when that's not been forthcoming in that four month period. So that's why then they applied on the 13th of May in order to this alternative construction method statement in order to try and get access to the site and build start building. However, I, I am aware that there are further discussions have been ongoing between Watch County Council Highways and the, um, the developers since the publication of this report to try and bring forward the technical approval for the original construction method statement access. Okay, can we move into a debate then, please? Councillor Eccleston. Yeah, thank you for the clarification, because I wanted that, that was going to 
form my opinion on this one. Um, I, I was aware that, um, clearly from reading the report, I was aware that there had been this delay. And I think, um, you know, through no fault of Warwick County Council, I guess, uh, through fault of Bloors, I guess this is... Uh, this delay, they haven't. Uh, they appear not to have contacted the council for a period of some seven to eight months, as you as you alluded to. Um, and, I, and I feel that because of the number of objections to this, and even objections by Warwick County Council Highways Department as such, or concerns by the Highways Department, uh, I would uh, move refusal on this and, and let them clear it with Warwick County Council. Councillor, that's all it is. Thank you, Chair. Just looking at also at the report. Um, 3.9, the only impediment to this access being provided is the delay from Warwickshire County Council Highways in approving the technical details. Therefore, it is a matter that rests squarely with the Highways Authority to resolve. And uh, in light of that, I'm more than happy to second Councillor Eccleston's proposal. Councillor Neil Sanderson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, we, it, we, it, we've, we've had this sort of thing before from these major developers where they expect the planning authority to solve all of their problems when they've had ample time to resolve this matter with Warwickshire County Council. Um, the condition, the enforcement of the condition is, is important, so we should refuse this and probably look to move to enforcement if they don't get this sorted with Warwickshire County Council. Okay, we've had a proposal and a seconder for refusal. Please. Uh all those in favour, please show. That's it. That's unanimous, I think. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. And we now move on to um, item number two on the agenda, which is New Haven Rugby Road, Withybrook, a site that I'm very, very familiar with. For more than one reason.
Uh, you also have, um, this is the proposed um, garage. So it's a, a triple garage together with a tack room at the ground floor. You then have a stairwell which then leads to the home office and a small kitchenette and WC and storage area. Uh, this is the proposed stable block. Um, you have two stables. Again, this is the through arch, the feed store and a wash down area. With regards to the key issues, uh, the proposal is located within the green belt. It's considered that the replacement dwelling together with the menage constitute appropriate development within the green belt. However, the garage building and the stable building constitute inappropriate forms of development within the green belt. With regards to impact on openness, development will result uh, in development on land which is currently open and free uh, from built form. The cumulative spatial impact of the proposed development is greater uh, than the existing uh, development on site in terms of the built form. It's therefore considered that will have a significant and permanent harm to Greenbelt by reducing openness. With regards to other harm, it also conflicts with uh, two of the five purposes of including land within the Greenbelt. It will result in limited harm uh, by checking unrestricted sprawl and moderate harm to safeguarding encroachment from development. The benefits of the proposal include the decontamination of the site, which will have significant benefits upon the local environment, biodiversity and human health, taking into consideration its former use as a scrapyard. It will also uh, include biodiversity enhancements, removal of extensive areas of hard standing, more natural drainage on the site, enhanced landscaping, an enhancement to the character and appearance of the site and the wider area. Uh, and just touching on the character and appearance of the area, with regards to the existing site, which again you can see from this photo, it comprises of the dwelling house and extensive areas of hard standing, enclosed with a palisade fencing, which does not complement the rural landscape in which it is situated within. With regards to the proposal, it will obviously result in development on areas of hard standing, uh, which is currently um, open at the moment. However, the proposed dwelling together with the mix of uses will be more akin to the rural environment. It will also result in the removal of the palisade fencing, which is quite an alien feature within this rural environment. It will also result in the removal of the extensive areas of hard standing and replacement with more soft landscaping. It's therefore considered that there will be no significant and detrimental impact upon the landscape character. With regards to other issues subject to conditions, it's not considered that the proposal will have any detrimental impacts on trees and hedgerows, ecology, highway safety, air quality and contamination. Turning to the planning balance, it's considered that the benefits that the proposal offers outweighs the harm to the Greenbelt and as such very special circumstances exist to justify development within the Greenbelt. It complies with the development plan and no material considerations indicate that development should be refused. There is therefore a presumption in favour of sustainable development. Recommendation is therefore for approval subject to two conditions and referral to the planning casework unit. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, for Nathan, for that presentation. Have we got any points of clarification, or do you want to go straight into debate on this one? Can I ask Councillor a question? Um, just because it is, and, and I really um, sort of like the I know what this site looked like previously, and uh, you know, as a scrapyard and as a motor mechanic, whatever it was, sales yard, and all the rest of it. So I do know what it looked like previously. One of, one of my concerns is, I, and, and you'll have to excuse me, is normally we'd be talking about 30%-ish above uh, what was there. I think it says in the report this is 37. Does that include all of the development, just so that I check the fact on that? Yes, yeah, so through you, Chair, so the 37% increase only relates to the uh, replacement dwelling 
um, for which we've done that calculation on. So the replacement dwelling will result in a 37% increase above the existing dwelling. Now, whilst that is over um, what we use as, as a local guide in terms of what we would consider acceptable, um, bearing in mind that that um, percentage increase doesn't take into consideration what may be possible under permitted development if they wanted to extend uh, that dwelling house. So if you took those into account as to what they may be able to do under permitted development, then that 37% that increase then, then reduces down to, to more towards the 30%, the which is obviously the local guidance, which is what's considered acceptable. Okay, and the, the stable would come along as a separate application based on the paddock anyway, yeah? is my understanding from the report. So the stable is included um, as part of, of this application. Um, however, um, the stable building itself is considered to be an appropriate development because of the impact um, it has upon the openness um, of the green belt. Um, thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm certainly familiar with the site. In fact, I, I remember when the first scrap vehicle appeared, when it was a farm actually, and over the many, many decades, I'm going back to the late 1960s now, yeah. good era, but, <laughs> but yes, it, we are at a point now where we can tidy the site up. Um, the parish council are um, okay with this, you know, they have to live with it on a daily basis, and uh, I, I don't mind approve it, uh, approving it from the chair. I'm happy to second it. Okay. And all those in favour? Yes, Are we okay with that? <laughs> Councillor Neil Sanderson, do you want to speak? Yeah, okay. I had indicated before you decided to uh, approve it from the chair. Um, whilst I, 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 this is a brownfield site in the green belt, in effect. In effect. Um, its former use, obviously, um, has a, had an impact on the environment, and uh, even though the dwelling is 37% bigger than one would expect. It's actually, 30, it, uh, its size was 37% bigger than one would expect for a unit there. Uh, that isn't my, uh, that's the one I don't have as much of a problem with. It's the triple garage, because that looks like it's on its way to being a house at some point in time. Uh, so the, the triple garage, on top of that, in terms of form and massing, I have some concerns about it. Through you, Chair, um, I, I do recognise your, your concerns that you've expressed there. And the reason for the triple garage is due to the applicant um, and his passion for, for cars. So he has got some expensive cars and therefore needs the triple garage. Now, whilst that's not obviously justification for, uh, for development in the Greenbelt, such, such, such as this, um, there are conditions attached to the, uh, to the permission which obviously prevents it, uh, well restricts it, only to be used uh, for the purposes as, as proposed, um, so it can't be converted um, at, at a later date. Um, even if it was, was converted, uh, from, from my own officer's point of view, I think we would have concerns if it did become an independent dwelling house because it's not in a sustainable location. So we wouldn't look to locate it uh, in this location anyway. Councillor Willis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we must be careful of not speculating of what may happen in the future. We must just focus on what is in front of us. A two-storey scale, and I'm quoting from the DNA here, of the main farmhouse and lower outbuildings are appropriate to the rural location and design style and will maintain the site and safeguard its future as an attractive countryside residence in stark contrast to the previous unauthorised uses, 37% or nay. Uh, and I will be supporting the application. Thank you. Because uh, residents in the Witherbrook and the surrounding area have lived with a site that have seen the whole of that uh, hard standing area stacked with cars, some three high, could be 500 cars stacked on the site, uh, and now there might be a nice house there, which will improve the outlook across the Greenbelt. So it's been moved and seconded for approval, and for the real time, let's vote again. <laughs> All those in favour? Oh, that 
that's unanimous anyway, thanks. You're aware uh, item number three on the uh, agenda, that's been referred to the next planning committee meeting. Uh, so we're going to move on to item number four, which is um, Rugby Cricket Club. And we've got Sam Green. Good afternoon. This presentation is for application R220219 at the Rugby Cricket Club and seeks retrospective permission for the refurbishment and extension of the existing cricket nets and the addition of AstroTurf. The application is being reported to Planning Committee in accordance with paragraph 5.2.3F, which refers to applications submitted by or on behalf of the Council. Although the applicant for the proposal is not Rugby Borough Council, the application site is the Rugby Cricket Club and in confirmation by the Council's Corporate Property Officer, the land is in ownership by the Council. Prior to the development in which this application seeks retrospective permission for, a two-bay cricket net was approved under application R11-1807 and it is this existing training structure that has been extended by two further bays at the same dimensions of 3.6 metres wide per each bay and 3.6 metres high with a full length of 18 metres. Due to the retrospective nature of the application, the development can be seen built in these site images in this slide. Again, it is just two extra bays which are to be assessed in this proposal. As can be seen, the development mirrors the existing net sharing the same materials and dimensions. Also included in this proposal is the addition of a cricket square added centrally to the site and using artificial material. So as part of the key considerations, the principle of development, the application is located in the rugby urban area and therefore the main focus for all development and is determined to be in accordance with policy GP2. The application has also increased and refurbished facilities used for informal and formal physical activity, exercise and recreation and therefore is in accordance with policy HS1. In terms of character and design, the proposal is largely an extension of an existing feature within the site and the chosen materials, design, siting and scale are all appropriate for the functional purposes and therefore can be considered acceptable. The nets are sited where they may have visually an impact on the residential properties which feature on Glebe Crescent. In assessment of this, the proposed nets are located at a distance and at a scale that would not be considered to have a significantly detrimental impact on the rear elevations or amenity spaces of the residential dwellings. This is further alleviated by the fact that the net does not block a significant amount of light to these properties due to the chosen materials. In terms of consultation, Warwickshire County ecologists found the development to result in a small loss of biodiversity. The technical consultee therefore recommends the applicant uses the development as an opportunity to enhance the biodiversity of the site and will be advised in the form of an informative note as part of any approval decision notice and there were no further objections received. In conclusion, the proposal is of an acceptable scale and design for its purpose and will be in accordance with policy GP2 of the local plan. The development also provides an increase in functional sporting apparatus and therefore can be seen to be in accordance with policy HS1. An assessment into the impact on the residential amenity has been made and the development is not considered to be significantly detrimental. The application has also received no objection from technical consultees and therefore on balance it is recommend of recommendation that this retrospective application should be approved subject to conditions. Thank you. Thanks to the office. Have we got any speakers? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, happy to move this for approval. Um, I was happened to be up in Webber to drive the other week. Um, I could see when one looks at a retrospective application is would we have approved it anyway? And I think we would have. And in terms of um, biodiversity loss, I, I would point out that there are a lot of very mature gardens of some considerable size uh, in sort of Webber to drive in that area. So. The, the biodiversity trust will be minimal, and if they do, uh, if they are going to do some things, some things on site to enhance it, then it belongs to the 
betterment of the environment as a whole. So I'm quite happy to move it for approval, Chair. Have we got a second? I'm happy to second that. Okay, Councillor Mrs Brown. Any further speakers? I must say that um, I've been doing some research on another t totally unrelated sport. I hadn't realised how various sports can complement one another. Even though they're totally unrelated, uh, one sport can, can really complement either, either the sport or individuals within that sport. So I'm f fully in favour of this. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you. Right, I believe that's all the applicant applications dealt with. Um, and now we move on to um, item number five, which is advanced notice of site visits. That's um, over to Richard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, no further to add. Item six, delegated decisions. And that's, that is unanimous. In that case, that draws the planning committee to an end. Thank you for attending.